Good morning, and thank you for watching. It is this is the orientation for our spring detox in 2022. So if you're here for that, you're in the right place. Um, wanted to show you my mug here. Got some hot stuff right here. <laughs> I'm drinking my detox tea. Um, which is just a, like a simple traditional medicinals detox tea, getting into the mood, getting into the swing of things. And um, I am looking forward to sharing a lot with you today. I am Jessica Graham Robinson. I'm an Ayurvedic practitioner. I am a mama of two boys. I am a dancer. I am a yoga teacher. I am a massage therapist. Um, we all wear lots of hats and um, just wanting to share a little bit about myself so that you feel like you know me a little bit. Um, I grew up in mainstream America in South Carolina and had um, just a very like uh, rural upbringing and um, always craved the opposite, always craved everything different. It uh, took me a lot of years to get to where I am, obviously. I am 46, soon to be 47, and I have taken a path that isn't one that I knew anything about when I grew up. So as my life has gone along, I've um, made my own choices and come to a place where I wholly believe in holistic medicine and holistic healing and that our, our bodies and our minds, like that, that we as beings, we are in this physical body, but that we are spiritual beings having a, a, a human experience here in a body on the earth. And what a blessing it is. Uh, obviously it's, it's difficult, it's uh, complicated at times and um, lots of room for growth. But I believe that as we are having this life, that this life is meant to teach us things, that we are growing and evolving. If we're paying attention and if we're open to it, that we are actually getting wiser and healthier and happier on our path and not the other way around. So the topic or the, I'll say the theme for this cleanse this year, because we I do this every year, is empowered aging with Ayurveda. Ayurveda very specifically um, addresses longevity. That is one of the, the foundations, like everything about Ayurveda and the way that we learn about how to take care of ourselves and how to be in relationship with ourselves, with our environment, with other people, is teaching us about how to be in harmony, all of our parts, how to be in harmony so that we're not accumulating things, whether that's habits or, um, or trauma, you know, what, however you wanna explain it. Like there's lots of different ways, mentally, emotionally, physically, um, sexually, um, relationally, career-wise, there's so many different ways that we can accumulate and store unwanted stuff that we don't really know what to do with in the moment. Ayurveda teaches us how to actually process, how to grow our ability to process the Agni, the, by using Agni, by uh, keeping our internal fire, our digestive fire strong, or if it's not, you know, it teaches us how to kindle it so that we can be stronger, so that we can learn how to say no to the proper things, so we can learn how to digest our food and our experiences um, and put it to good use, right? So that we turn our experiences into wisdom instead of baggage. And in the same way with our food, we turn our food, we eat the right foods and we eat the right foods in the right way. So that we turn our food into energy and into the nutrients that are making us into more vibrant creatures instead of 
uh, accumulation and disease. So <clears throat> that said, that is the, that's the empowered aging, like giving you the tools, I hope that will help you. And I hope that you will be able to, through this cleanse, not just do one thing, do this cleanse for a period of three weeks and feel better, but I really hope that you are able to take control of your life and your health and your aging in a new way. This, that this is like a reset that sets you on a new path that takes you on a trajectory that maybe you didn't even know was possible for you. And um, so again, I will thank you for being here and we're gonna get started. So if you haven't already received an email, you will, you will be receiving an email um, that gives you access to, I'm gonna show you here, it gives you access to a web page that is our course hub. Okay, let me switch over to, yeah, here we are. Do, do, do. Bear with me for a second. Okay. No, and this pat this um this page is password protected because it's only for those of you that are here that are paying for the cleanse and um, not just a page on the website um, for anyone to be able to view. So let me share this with you. Where is that? There you go. Share button. Share. Okay. So this is what that looks like. I'm just giving you a quick, like kind of tutorial over this. Oh, that's the wrong one. Hold on a second. Here we go. So hopefully you're seeing this. Um, this is what it looks like. This is my website, um, sacredspacehealingarts.com, also ayurvedainbend.com. And this is the website. So you'll see, you will first see the page asking you for the password. And then once you put it in, you'll see this course hub here. So you'll see the image that you've seen probably in the um, something that made you sign up for this. So these are different these are different pieces. Like you're gonna wanna, if you, especially if you're doing this online only and not in person, right here, you'll see a little link. If you hover over it, it says this brief form. It's a form to ask you some questions and that's gonna go to me. And it's asking you to get clear on your reasons for this, um, doing this detox and what you want out of it. And that's really important to, to do. We'll talk about that. This is what that looks like. This will take you here, your anchor, what and why. Um, this is letting you know that if you are part of the Hawthorne group that is doing this, we have three in-person classes. Um, one that was last night, one during week two, and one that is at the end, the closure um, class. And if you are joining online only or if you want to join in with the online classes that um, these are the times for that. This is the Zoom link. Um, this is the password. Down below you will see documents to download. And so these I recommend clicking and printing and putting in like a spiral bound notebook so that or like a, a three ring binder or something. I also recommend having a journal to take you through this experience. And it might be a journal, you might not fill it up because you're only doing it for three weeks, but you might be surprised. You, you actually might fill it up depending on how much you use this experience to really process and journal. Um, and if you don't, you can use it for the next cleanse that you do and you can continue in that way. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. You can just use a a, a notebook, but I um, highly recommend that you that you do have that. So these you will see like the foods to avoid list, the spring cleanse food list, habits and tips for cleansing, recipes, weekly cleanse protocol, oleation as part of week two, if you want to go there, journaling prompts for all of the three weeks, 
And then the last one, your personal evolution. We're really going to work with that one during week three. You'll also see some meditations here. Um, like I've said before, if you've heard me say before, this cleanse is not just about changing your diet. It's really about adopting some habits, some self-care habits that will serve you moving forward in your life. So um, meditation is, you can call it whatever you want. You could call it sitting in silence. I had a teacher who specifically called it sitting in silence because sometimes the word meditation has a connotation with some people and they might worry about, um, you know, what meditating means or something. It's meditating is just getting still with yourself and being able to listen, being able to receive, being able to be present in the moment without needing a distraction and really getting clear about who you are, you know, where, where your place is in the universe, where connecting with your creator. Um, it's a, it, it's very akin to prayer. They say that, um, Meditation is like listening, whereas prayer is more like um, talking to or asking. So um, meditation is a wonderful thing. It will be highly beneficial for you during this cleanse. Even if it's not something that you want to continue on, I recommend doing a little meditation um, every day or you know, off, as often as you can fit it in. So these are a few, um, some of them are longer than others. It, there's the time, so you'll know how much time you have um, to do that, and, you know, depending on how much time you have in your schedule for that given day. But these are some ways you can, you can practice. All of the class recordings will go right here. It will be posted so that you will be able to um, see them uh, soon within 24 hours of each class. And then here we have a link to go to our Facebook group. This is a private group. No one else can see anything that is in the group. And it is a great place for you to start a conversation, ask a question, share a recipe, um, take a picture of your anchor statement and share it with the group or get guidance from me. It's a wonderful way to continue with community. If you, especially if you can't make it live to the classes, really important that you have some sense of connection that brings you in. Otherwise, it's just gonna feel like you're floating around out there by yourself. And that's not as helpful as being part of a group. Um, so now you know um, where you can find all of those goodies. And I'm going to proceed. So today's gonna be a little bit workshoppy i'm gonna and it's gonna i'm gonna be giving you an introduction to or sorry an um an outline of where we're going with this cleanse um so i have printed out some of these things so you can you i i shared them with you in that on that page and i'm going to share them again um uh oh where did it go there we go this is the one that i'm looking at right now and this is where we're, we're gonna do a little workshoppy part so what i want you to do <clears throat> before we get started with with this is to find a comfortable seat and so if you're if you're not in a comfortable place just get up move around find find a good place to sit i want you to be on your sitting bones um you could also be lying down if you feel more like inclined to do that today um, but not lounging, not, not sitting in a weird way. Sit right up on your sitting bones if you're sitting. Let your feet be flat on the floor if that's possible and your spine nice and long. So just, we're gonna do just a little exercise here. So placing your hands on your knees, you're gonna just take a deep breath in and see if you can breathe the breath down into your belly. We can do that a couple of times, breathing out through the mouth, breathing in and expanding into the lower back and the belly and the pelvis. And then exhaling, releasing through the mouth. Relax your tongue. 
We'll do that again. Deep breath down into the pelvis. Fill it up. Relax the jaw and then exhale through the mouth. I like to remind myself to relax the tongue because it's such an integral part of um, getting in touch with your, or, or kind of getting back into your parasympathetic nervous system where you can just relax and be here, relaxing the tongue. We tend to store tension there and don't even know it. Um, so take a hand to your low belly and a hand to your lower back, like very low belly, not, not up high, not where your navel is, but a little bit lower. And try to make that area expand into both hands. And if it's not doing that, it's okay. Just keep breathing and imagine that it is. Imagine that your belly and your lower back are softening at every time you breathe in and that those areas are expanding into your palms. One more breath like that. Now just sliding your hands around to the right hip and left hip. Again, down low at the hip socket. Breathe in and expand. Or imagine you're expanding. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. One more like that. Breathe in. Breathe out. Now, just like breathing naturally, you're just gonna let your, think of a snake like sideways so that you're, you're lifting one sitting bone a little and your hips, your shoulders are, and you can go really slow if you feel stiff, you go really, really slow, but you're kind of sidewinding a little bit. Your hands can go back to your knees or you can raise them up in the air. And you're just stretching a little bit and getting a little more motion in the spine. So now we're gonna to come to a, make that smaller and smaller. And then we're gonna go front back. So you're gonna arch your back. So the head drops and the tailbone moves back behind you. Your belly and your chest go forward. Head and tailbone go back, breathe in. And then breathe out as you curl your tailbone and your head toward one another and your back goes behind. And then inhale, coming forward, rocking toward the fronts of your sitting bones. Exhale, squeezing back. And again, breathe in, rocking forward, opening up the chest and the belly, breathing out. Expanding the back ribs, dropping the head as much as comfortable. And then one more time, breathe in. And breathe out. And then do any small movements that feel good just to kind of open up and stretch. Maybe something else is calling to you. Your arms want to go up. Your hands want to get a little stretch. Your neck wants to be involved. And then let yourself just kind of settle back in to a good place. So now hopefully your spine feels a little more supple, feels a little more like, okay, there's curves there, there's freedom and flexibility there, but I can also be still within that gentle wave-like um, spine that I have that you have. All right, so just pausing for a moment. Let's place one hand on the low belly, one hand on the heart and close your eyes. The jaw relax. Allow yourself to feel your body. Notice the sensations in your body. The bottoms of the feet on the floor, your seat on your seat. The air on your skin. heartbeat underneath your hand, your belly rising and falling with your breath, 
You may even also notice a little wave-like motion or a little rocking, some kind of a subtle movement that's happening in your body. This is a good sign that you're relaxed and in tune. It means you're allowing yourself to be free enough for the natural rhythms to show themselves. Just allowing yourself to think for a moment about how you would like to feel. <clears throat> and when I say think, I'm going to erase that word. Allow yourself to feel right now how you would like to feel, to intuit how you would like to feel, to accept and kind of visualize or um, perceive how you would like to feel in three weeks or a month. Let yourself imagine, let yourself really grow that muscle because it, it is just like a muscle. It's a mental muscle to be able to visualize, to be able to create with your mind. Maybe you imagine yourself doing something in three weeks to a month and how you would feel doing that, that thing that you love to do or plan to do. Maybe it's something you do now, but it will feel different then. Or maybe it's something that you're not doing now because it's not accessible or it doesn't feel good, but you want it to and it will. I want you to hold on to that image or that feeling for yourself right now. Just a little bit longer and see if you can bring that feeling into your body. Bring that feeling into your body. What does it feel like to feel that way right now? Again, we're using our imagination. But imagine that you already have that. That feeling's already with you. That is going to happen. It is happening right now because you've made the choice to be here. You've made the choice to embark on a journey. And that is the destination. You are on it already. And now slowly just begin to be aware again of the ground beneath your feet, whatever you're sitting on, your hands on your body. Take a deep breath and slowly start to open your eyes, not looking at the screen first, but just letting your eyes look down, blinking a couple of times rolling your eyes around in a circle slowly one direction and then in the opposite direction. <clears throat> so I want you to know that that experience is significant. If you really did that, then it's with you. And that is um, part of what I, what is going on with why we do the, the what and the why, the anchor statement that, that is in that form that I just showed you. And this is your worksheet for the spring detox. And it's asking you how you feel right now. How do you feel in your body? How do you feel in your life? What are the areas that 
want your attention right now? What are the adjectives you could use to um, describe your experience right now in your life? Because that's going to give you, that's going to be like, you know, you are here on the map. So that you, we know what direction you want to go in. Another thing that's going to affect how you go forward in this cleanse is whether you've done something like this before, how busy or stressful is your life right now? And the reason I ask that is how willing or able are you in your life right now to be able to make big changes? Because I want you to be successful. And you don't have to make big changes to be successful. To be successful, you have to make small changes and you have to be consistent. So if you come out of this cleanse having only adopted one new habit and having only minimally changed your diet throughout these three weeks, you will make more change than someone who is very drastic and does all of the things, but then just goes right back to where they were or even further back in the hole. So I want you to really think about that and internalize where you are, what changes you wanna make, why you wanna make them, what is your like feeling that you want to have at the end of this so that you are tied to that. And then because that means so much to you, you, you begin to implement small changes. Um, so this worksheet is gonna kind of walk you through all of that. It's really important that you do this worksheet. And right now, if you want to just pause and take some time to ask yourself how you want to feel. You know, we just did that exercise Maybe you have some things you can write down from that right away, or you know, maybe you need to think about it some more. If you're watching this after the fact, you can, or after this, you can, you can do this along and just pause the video and take some time to do that. And so this is the second question I asked, how deep or light do you want this detox to be? Um, be honest. This is, this is the thing, if you're honest, then we can make progress. If you're not, and you think you want something big, but you're really not willing to commit to what it takes, then just be honest about that. Because hopefully this is, like I said, a new way of being for you that will serve you, it will continue. It's not just a quick fix. This is the beginning of a journey. And it doesn't have to be big because if you do this successfully small, and then you come back around, maybe you do it again in the fall and you go deeper. Maybe you do it again next year in the spring and you go deeper. And then next thing you know, like it's just a part of your life and you're getting, you're evolving into a more vibrant creature, even as you age. Um, I, I do recommend, and it says that right here, after you get these words that you want to feel, write it down like on some sticky notes and put them in places that you're gonna see them. Maybe you stick one in your car, maybe you stick one on the front door, one on the fridge, one on the bathroom mirror, one on your computer, just as a reminder of like, mm, yeah, that's gonna be amazing. And then even in that moment when you read it, you can take a deep breath and internalize that feeling and allow yourself to feel it now. And you may say to yourself, but that's not true, I'm not there you can feel like you are and that will help you bring it into existence as as strange as that may sound a lot of times we we chase after things in our lives and we think once i get that i will feel x but oftentimes that's not even true because once we get that we're still looking for the next thing we don't allow ourselves to just feel good to just feel the way we want to feel it's, it's true that you can feel however you want to feel, period. And it doesn't have to be dictated by experience. And it doesn't have to be dictated by circumstance in the world. So that's our choice. Um, sure, certain situations 
you know, lend themselves to feeling crappy, but you can choose a better thought. You can choose a better feeling. And if you do, it's going to make it easier to get to that situation that will serve that feeling. So it's important to design what su define what success is going to look like for you. Um, and then there's just, just some more questions. There's a lot of different things here um, just to whet your appetite for this cleanse and define it for you. Um, we're going to simplify our diet a lot, um, get rid of processed food. And it, it's a good idea to, to check in. Like when we're in tune, your cravings are what you actually need. But when we're imbalanced, when we have AMA, which we'll get into later, when we have AMA, oftentimes we don't crave what is good for us. We, you know, we crave those things that take us further out of balance. So see if, see what that feels like to you. If you think about hmm, what does my body need? What is it craving in that way? See if you can be in touch with that and what's calling to you. You know, sometimes even when you have like a superficial craving for pizza or ice cream or, you know, whatever, like cheesy goodness <laughs> there is out there, you can sometimes, I've had this experience before where I might want that but I can tell what my body wants is actually like something different. Maybe it's the like vegetable clear brothy soup with like some spice to it that would, that would really help me more. So um, even if you are craving, you know, those things that are unhealthy, hopefully you still have like a, a gut sense of, what your body really wants and needs. So these are just some things for you to, to look at. I would love it if you would share this with me. So after you fill out this um, form, some of which, the last part of which is actually in the form that's online, um, the Google form. So if you, if you are doing that, then you'll see like some of, you won't need to do these last few, but particularly things that you wanna share with me either email it to me or take a picture and text it to me, or um, you can take a picture and post it in our Facebook group because it's gonna be really helpful for me to know what you want and what you need so that I can support you through this cleanse. I cannot stress this enough. You need to reach out to me so that I can keep you accountable, so that I can support you in the way that you need. So the more you plug in to me and to this group, the more you're going to get out of this. If you just watch, if you just listen, if you just do go on your own and do things, you might have an amazing experience, but I promise it will be richer. Uh, in the past, people that have done that, I'm not sure how successful they've been because they didn't, they didn't communicate with me. And if that happens, my fear is that they're really just feeling like they wasted their money. And I just, that's the last thing that I want. I want you to feel like you got 10 times as much money as you paid for this out of it. Um, so you have to help me help you. So do this, this is important um, to get you set up. Now I'm going to move on to another document. This is, all of these again are in the course hub. I definitely want you to read this one, Agni and Ama. This talks to you about the importance of Agni and what role it plays and what Ama is. Ama is undigested, it means undigested. And you can think of it as toxic buildup of undigested food and experiences. And Ama is the cause of disease, of all dis-ease. Some of the signs of AMA are having a lack of energy, feeling heavy, lethargic, not feeling hungry, or like you have a taste for food at all, feeling um, tired even after a full night's sleep, having pain and achiness and stiffness in the body, um, mental fog, like brain fog, or the inability to concentrate, signs of indigestion on a regular basis, gas, bloating, stomach aches, um, having a white sticky mucus coating on your tongue in the morning, 
I mean, it's, it's, it's normal to have a, some of a coating in the morning, like a little bit, but I'm talking like a really thick white covering on your tongue when you wake up. That's, that's definitely a sign of AMA. Um, and also other signs of stagnation in the body that are AMA, constipation, a lot of sinus congestion, breathing difficulties. Um, it's natural for us to accumulate AMA sometimes, but it's also natural if we're in tune for, that, for us to naturally like rid ourselves of it um, in ways where we're listening and you know, doing things to counter that. But if we're not, then we start accumulating the toxic buildup. And that becomes a problem because like I said, it's the root of dis-ease. So um, one of the things that's really important is having a really strong digestive fire so that we can steer clear of disease so that we can keep detoxifying in a natural way every day. Our body has a beautiful and seamless way of doing that every day. And if we are able to allow that process instead of the accumulation of AMA that stops that process, then um, we're going to age a lot great, more gracefully. Um, that's going to make a big difference. Let's see. So this is your recipe book. It's, um, there's several things in here, breakfast, lunch, dinner, um, some sauces, some things like that. This is the spring cleanse food list, you'll see, it's two pages. And then this is our, nope, that's not it. And that's on the other, hold on. <laughs> oh, okay, that's paused. So some of this may not have worked. I hope that you were able to see all of that. Um, there's also an avoid list that, um, that is important to look at. And let's see, there's one more thing I wanted to share with you here on the screen. Okay, here's the foods to avoid. And there's that, okay. Got it. All right. Mm, nope, that's not it. Okay, here. So this is the protocol. So that now, now we're gonna go through the outline. So the first week of the cleanse, you are going to be easing in. So this is when you're really going to be um, paying attention to staying away from things on the avoid list, which you see here, as much as possible. Now, like I said, where you are right now has a great deal of importance um, in significance in the decision of where you're going to go. So if you are doing all of these things right now, <laughs> which you're probably not doing all of them, but if you are having a lot of these things and you feel attached to them, then it's going to be a process of weaning off of them. And it may be that some of them you don't completely wean off of, and that's going to be okay. I want to stress that it's important for you to be where you are and honestly be there. I promise you'll still get a lot out of this. If you are completely addicted to caffeine and there's no way you're going off of it during this cleanse whatsoever, it's going to be okay. And then, you know, it's, it is what it is. Anything is better. So like I said, 1% improvement, one, like just little steps are, are going to have the most significant improvement in your life. So just to, um, oh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Where was I going with that? Um, I forgot, it'll have to come back. So the, you're gonna try to stay away from these things during the, during the first week. Being um, honest with where you are. Um, if you have any questions about things on this list, please do let me know. 
and we can address that. If we go back to the weekly protocol, so you're easing in some of the habits that I want you to try to adopt. Oh, I remember what I was gonna say. Um, it's about addiction and you know, not necessarily any kind of substance abuse per se, but the idea of the addiction that we have, like it's a, the patterns that we have of being attached to things like coffee caf or caffeine in whatever form you choose. Um, or overeating, or binge watching on Netflix, or um, whatever, like craving sweet things. Like we all get into habits at times, especially in you know the the darker, heavier times of winter. It's it's easy to accumulate some habits that don't serve. And so one of the things that's going to be important is as we try to add in a healthy habit is breaking that addiction cycle. It's just like, can we, can we add in something that's positive? And then maybe that makes it a little easier to let go of something because you wanna be control, in control of you. You don't wanna be slave to something, right? You wanna be in control of you. You wanna be in control of how you age and how you heal and just your life in general, who you are. If you're waking up in the morning and you can't function without a cup of coffee, then who's in control? The coffee is in control of you. And the same goes for eating or watching or whatever else, the, um, whatever that negative habit is. So as we add in these things, like if something is really hard to break, you're going to try to break it, but that's one thing you can do. We can and that's something that we can do in the next session, the week one call, where if you have these things that you're having a hard time with, I recommend that you bring it to me and ask me questions about it because I can coach you through making a new habit or like, you know, finding the trigger and then trying to circumvent it. So, um, but I can't do that if I don't know. So please do reach out to me because that is something that I have some skills in. And I'd like to share them with you. So first thing in the morning, one of the habits you want to start is drinking warm water. About, about, it can be a cup, it can be two cups. It really depends on you and what your body needs. So I'm suggesting 16 ounces of warm water. If you're not used to drinking water in the morning, it may feel, that may feel like a lot and that you might feel slightly nauseous. And that's okay. You're probably not going to throw up. Um, I've never heard of that actually happening. Um, but one of the things that often will happen if your digestion is, is pretty good and you are needing that water, oftentimes after having water in the morning, you will have a bowel movement. If you drink one cup of water or half a cup of water and you have a bowel movement, you may not need to drink the whole 16 ounces, but this is my suggestion, 16 ounces of warm water first thing in the morning. Begin to wean off all processed foods, sugars, and caffeine. Um, start shopping from the spring food list. And a lot of those things are just the things that are showing up in the grocery stores. I mean, we tend to have access to almost everything all of the year, but especially if you're shopping in a smaller store or um, like a natural food store, oftentimes you will start to see, you know, more radishes and um, green beans and spring lettuces and things like that. And, and that's an, an indication like those, are, oh, those are growing. Like um, some of the places around here will actually have some local produce and those are, that's even better if you can get local and organic um, seasonal produce. You're, we're gonna eat three meals a day during this whole cleanse. So you're not ever going to be um, starving for food. We wanna make sure that we're eating about 80% veggies for lunch and dinner, and we're not snacking in between meals. So if you get hungry, that's gonna be, that's, that's information. If you, if you eat and you get really hungry and you need to have something, it's going to be okay, but I want you to take that as a learning experience. If you eat breakfast at eight o'clock and then by 12, like by 11 or 10, you're starving, 
that's telling you that your breakfast wasn't big enough. It wasn't sufficient enough. It wasn't nutrient dense enough. So tomorrow do it differently. Um, here's another trick that's not in here. If you're hungry an hour after a meal, drink water. So that may actually, you may have been thirsty and um, that's, that's a really common thing. And you also may just be used to eating closer together. And so try not to, to indulge in that, in that like wanting to eat if you can, but instead drink some water and then wait and have your meal at the mealtime. Like I said earlier, you want to eat your biggest meal at lunchtime sometime between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. So you're going to eat a breakfast. We're going to have like at least four hours in between. Eat a very significant biggest meal of the day, lunch. And then again, like four hours, at least four hours before we have supper. Um, going back to this sheet, um, 30 minutes before meals, I want you to drink 12 ounces of warm water. And then an hour after meals, you're going to begin to drink warm, warm to hot water again. So this time between meals, um, one hour post meal and up to 30 minutes before the next meal, this is when you need to hydrate. And I'm not talking about guzzling, I'm just talking about consistently sipping. Or if you can't remember to consistently sip, then you know, drink eight ounces of water and then an hour later drink another, you know, some amount. But warm water, preferably warm to hot, like tea hot temperature, and sipping or you know, drinking a significant amount, but not necessarily like don't guzzle a giant water bottle at one time because that's too much for your body to handle. Um, and it's, it's more hurtful than, than helpful. So you want to drink between that's going to help your, your hydrate, your body, your cells, especially because the water is warm and it's, you're going to drink about a gallon of water a day, more if you're sweating, if you're like working out hard, or if you're, you know, jogging, if you're doing things that make you sweat a lot, you're going to want to drink more than that. <clears throat> On, there's another sheet that you'll see that looks like this, habits and tips for cleansing. Um, that's gonna give you a lot of new potential habits <clears throat> that you could bring in. And so here where it says incorporate one to two new self-care habits during this week, you can look at that and, and see. But what I'm suggesting is that you start with tongue scraping the first thing in the morning and dry brushing. Um, especially like at least by the time we get to the week two, I'd like you to be dry brushing, but that's a good thing to go ahead and start with week one. And if drinking water is new to you, that could be one of your, you know, first new self-care habits. And um, like I said, go at your own pace. Don't get overwhelmed. If you adopt one new habit and make one um, food change, I, and, and you keep it for three weeks, then you, you're, that is success. So um, feel good about that. I want you to also this first week and, and definitely the entire cleanse, schedule time for nothing. I want you to have unscheduled time. And that doesn't mean time where, oh, I don't have anything to do, I'll turn on the television. It means time where you, you don't have to do anything. Um, one of my, my craniosacral teachers talks about the importance of having time for reverie, time for just sitting in the hammock, listening to the birds, listening to the river, whatever that is for you. Um, but time that's not filled up is important. And try to get your feet on the earth for 20 minutes every day. And that might be something that you don't do every day. It might, might be something you don't do, um, what I mean is now every day. It might be something that's harder to incorporate if you're like a busy person, but that could be something that you do during your unscheduled time that you just go put your feet on the earth. There's a lot of studies that show how earthing is amazing for your health because it helps to um, balance the electromagnetic field in your body. It helps to ground and release things that we accumulate. It's amazing what, 
the earth can do for us. Week two, there's a couple of different options. So again, this is totally up to you. And I want you to imagine yourself doing all of these and see which one feels right. You can feel free to reach out to me and ask me anything about it or two. But you could either eat kitchery all three meals a day and the recipe is in the recipe book. So kitchery is a convalescence food. It's a cleansing food that is traditional for Ayurveda and it is made of traditionally basmati or some kind of long grain white rice and split mung beans. And split mung beans are, they're, it, they look, it, a mung bean is green when you see it dried, but when you get the split mung beans, it's yellow because the green shell has been removed and you, the two pieces are split inside just like split peas split a lot of those beans when they're dry they can split open when the shell is off so um or the skin is off so kitchery is made with those two and spices um so you can either eat kitchery for all three meals a day you can make a breakfast version to make uh to make it a little less monotonous the duo diet would be if you're having kitchery with cooked vegetables um, a poly diet would be if you're, this is just an example, but you're mixing it up a little bit. You're having vegetables and you're having kitchery and like at different times, right? So you might have uh, porridge for breakfast or stewed apples for breakfast and kitchery for lunch with vegetables. And then dinner could be a clear brothy soup with vegetables or just clear broth or just cooked veggies. Um, there's a lot of different options for the poly diet. You like with meat version, this is particularly for people who, if you feel like you just aren't getting enough energy from your food without meat, or if you're a really heavy meat eater already, that it might be something or for someone who's weak and really just needs that. Like if you have low iron and you're like unstable in some way, that could be really helpful. Um, kitchery is an amazing food. It's easy to digest. The way that we make it when we're on a cleanse is it's very watery. It's very, um, we make it thinner. So it's not like eating beans and rice, like you would think of like cooking rice and cooking beans and then putting them together in a bowl or on a plate. This is more soupy and the beans are tiny and they really cook down almost to liquid. Um, when you're cooking the kitchery, you'll see in the recipe, but it's suggested, it's, I recommend that you use a pressure cooker, cooker, an instant pot works really great and it's very fast. If you're not doing that, absolutely you need to um, soak the beans for 24 hours before and pour off the water that they soaked in, rinse the beans again before you cook them and then cook them thoroughly until they are, you know, you don't really see the bean anymore. Um, kitchery helps to pull toxins from the body and it's a complete protein. It's a really, this is why we use it. It's really amazing. Um, Let's see. Yes. For, for, so for week two, while you're doing that, you have a couple of options. If you really want to go deep in this cleanse, you can do what we call oleation and purgation. It's two steps. And what happens is we are adding in ghee. We're, we're using ghee in the morning. First thing in the morning, taking ghee and, um, and, Every day you're increasing how much ghee you're having and you're having it on an empty stomach and you're, you're oleating. It's a lipophilic medicated detoxification that you're doing in scientific terms. And it's, you're filling up your tissues with fat so that when you then do the purgation afterwards, it's pulling the toxins that are stored in your fat tissues out along with the fat. And, um, so you have like a, if you, if you want to do this part, it's a very, uh, good opportunity to release stored toxins in your fat tissues and also to release stored toxins, stored ama 
in your mental, emotional body. So um, just on so many levels, it's, it's amazing. Um, so anyway, you can read through this. We will talk about week two a lot more in a lot more detail next week um, in week one as we're prepping. So we'll do a little coaching and a little teaching for week two next week in the week one class. Week three is emerging. It may look a lot like the very first week, but it's going to be very different at the same time because after having gone through week two, you're going to feel so much different and you're going to be more in touch with intuitively what your body needs. So you're going to start incorporating new things, things that are on the spring food list, but also things that might have been on the avoid list before, like um, eventually, um, like for instance, nuts, or, I mean, you can eat some nuts already, but let's look at that avoid list real quick. Where did that go? Here we go. Like um, you might bring back miso, for instance. But when you bring, when you're bringing back things, especially soy and um, dairy and eggs, things that can potentially be um, harder to digest or have food sensitivity issues along with them, those things you're going to want to add in one at a time. You know, so if you decide you're going to have bread on, I, I would actually suggest staying away from the soy and the dairy and gluten for the whole third week. But when you do add it back in, you're going to add one of those back in so that you can start to see like, am I having a reaction? Does this affect my digestion? Does this affect my mental focus? And you'll, you'll know because you weren't having it before. So one at a time and, and like with a couple of days in between even if possible, but you can start to bring back in things like some of these grains, you can start to bring back some fermented foods. And I highly suggest bringing sprouts in within the third week, not that those aren't allowed in the first week, but just because they have so much nutrients, like 300 times the amount of nutrients that, um, like say broccoli has, a broccoli sprout has 300 times. It's, it's crazy. Um, so yeah, you're gonna, and then you'll bring back, I forgot to say during week two, which we'll talk more about, but during week two, you, um, if you're doing the oleation, you stop all other fats. So you're gonna stay away from nuts and seeds, stay away from all oils, even ghee, for that week because you're taking in that fat in the morning and you don't want like we'll we'll get into more detail on it that is um let's see if there's anything else i wanted to touch on there just in looking at there is another sheet that is specifically talks about the oleation and gives you more detail on that and um, there's another handout that you'll see in there that has journal prompts for you for the three different weeks. So um, there's a lot of reading for you to get started with. One of the things I want you to do, so I'm gonna um, tell you right now, I want you to read everything, make the time to read everything this weekend, if possible. And I want you to look at your calendar and decide exactly what your start date is for week one, for week two, for week three. And I want you to decide by looking, going through the worksheet, fill out the whole worksheet. So that's another one. <laughs> Where are we at now? Um, we've got do all the reading, do the worksheet, which is like several pages. Um, just look at your calendar and decide your dates for the cleanse, um, join the Facebook group and decide what direction you think you're gonna go for week two. That's a really important thing. And that's gonna be determined kind of after you fill out the worksheet that should, that should get a little clearer for you, like how, how deep or, or as you're doing the reading, like, you know, what's gonna 
that's going to be good for you. You do, you do need one day, um, the last day of week two, that you're really not scheduling anything at all. So that needs to either be on a weekend or a, a day where you don't have to go into work or you don't have any volunteer commitments or anything like that because you need to be home and um, working on just you. So if you have any questions, please reach out to me. I am excited for you. I'm excited for me. Um, I'd like to see you in the Facebook group and know what your words are, what, how you want to feel or your five words that you'd like to feel like in three weeks. Um, I think we've covered everything here and I look forward to seeing you um, on the next call or in person. And um, yeah, so my email is info at sacredspacehealingarts.com. Uh, my number is 541-706-0676. I think everyone already has that. Um, yeah, I think that's all. So you'll be getting an email if you haven't already, which has all of these links and pieces in it. And uh, I wish you the best. I hope you have a great weekend and enjoy like the time from now until the date that you set for easing in for your week one. Hope you have a good time enjoying your food that you, you know, the, that you have the ability to eat right now. You know, maybe you want to go out and have one of your favorite things. Maybe you want to um, indulge a little bit on some of those things with the feeling of, yes, I can, because I'm about to not <laughs> be able to, because I'm choosing that. And I also want you to sit with that worksheet and the idea of what it is you're wanting to bring in. So many blessings to you. I'm excited that you're on this journey with me and um, I'm here for you. So have a great weekend and let me know if you need me. Namaste. See you later.